this paper present the results of an experimental pilot study conducted within the, um, uh, the PROCON project led by Margherita Gleba at Cambridge and aimed at uh, evaluating uh, what uh, can we learn from textile tools that have been found um, in survey research rather than that is in open context rather than uh, in excavated closed context. So the study was aimed at uh, um, investigating the opportunity but also the challenges of this particular type of data. The study was initially focused on Central Italy, thanks to the collaboration of um, many scholars who have uh, conducted research service in the area. And then it was uh, um, extended to a comparison with Greece, thanks to the collaboration of uh, Emery Farinetti. Firstly, we are going to discuss the methodological issues which uh, are related to the reliability of the survey data, their dating, their representativeness, and uh, well -known, uh, the problem of well-known post-positional factors. And we are going to see our case studies, Central Italy and Greece, and we are going to draw some preliminary conclusions. Finally, we are going to, um, to highlight some potential further work. One of the first problems when studying textile tools from survey data, one of the main problems is the reliability itself. Uh, how can we relate uh, textile tools to a specific uh, function or activity if we uh, lack the uh, precise information of a context? And also, uh, how can we date them and uh, relate them to a specific phase of uh, the site that often is uh, multi-phase by nature? Um, in addition, often uh, um, textile tools from survey data are not very huge in number, so how can they uh, reveal or indicate uh, partners and trends? And finally, there is the obvious problem of uh, uh, post-depositional biases. Okay, let's go through the first case study, Central Italy. As I mentioned earlier, um, Central Italy is a region that has been uh, very intensively surveyed. And on the, in the square on the top left, you see project that has been included in, uh, in this study, so from the pioneers you know, of the Hyper Valley project that has been recently subject to a re-evaluation by the British School of Rome, the Lazio Veto project, the Forma Italia project, the, um, uh, the Suburbium project led by Professor Carandini and Professor Carafa, Team region project led by Peter Altman uh, and his team from uh, Groningen, um, and also the Malafede survey, and we also have the Rieti survey and the Toscania project. And in the, the landscape the slide, you see some of the field around uh, the side of Crustumelio, which is uh, a small uh, proto urban uh, uh, settlement to the northeast of Rome that later became the suburbium of Roma, in which I conducted the from the next slide. These slides show the visibility of data according to the different uh, survey projects which were conducted in uh, different times and sometimes with slightly uh, different uh, methodologies. However, we can see that uh, um, a common partner uh, is uh, um, is revealed, uh, um, in which uh, the long weights are certainly the most uh, visible, followed by spin the wall and uh, um, finally by generic textile tool. So even if uh, um, we, we have to assume uh, differences, we can still see um, uh, some common uh, um, underlying generalities between the different projects. How data have been analyzed? The, the first step of the work is the dating of the textile tool. 
Primarily, this uh, has been uh, made uh, uh, on the basis of uh, uh, typological analysis, either on the field or um, in the lab or from publication. And this is obviously based on the, on the shape of the object, the type uh, of uh, uh, clay, the um, uh, the inclusions, uh, uh, the presence or not of inscriptions and decorations. But when uh, the typological dating was uh, uh, too, too general, uh, not possible or uh, uh, not available, uh, we devised uh, um, a new way of dating the two, which is uh, uh, by context. Now, this is uh, slightly difficult because, as we said uh, in the survey, we are uh, dealing with open context. However, sometimes it was possible to uh, pin down the, the dating of the, of the tool by context to one or two phases. And we, uh, we decided that this was uh, um, reliable enough. Um, in fact, uh, the, as, as uh, we will see uh, later, the, the results of the analysis and their uh, internal consistency uh, made us uh, um, realize that this initial assumption was uh, a rather reasonable and acceptable assumption. This slide shows some types of textile tools found in the region through time, from the dark impasto, impasto bruno, bronze age, and iron age, spin the war and and spools, and sometimes long weight as well, to the more common uh, loom weight of uh, um, impasto, pale impasto, of impasto chiaro of the archaic period, or some more uh, spin the war of impasto bruno, to the republican and imperial uh, Roman uh, period loom weight, uh, uh, again in uh, cream or very pale clay. Sometimes these tools can also have uh, decoration or inscriptions. Um, in particular, it has been highlighted by uh, Lynn Fox for Southern Etruria, how um, in, the, in the archaic period, especially, uh, long weights can have uh, signs uh, uh, indicating women and family connections in the territory, or uh, in the Roman period, we can have uh, the name of uh, the producers uh, of the loom weights. Most data presented in this paper uh, in relation to the Greek, Greek case study come from the Beotia survey conducted in Greece uh, since uh, the 1978. One uh, important point to bear in mind in relation to Greek uh, uh, material and survey, but it also partially affect uh, Italian material, is that uh, sometimes uh, um, textile tool uh, have been uh, used uh, as uh, a discriminator, as key marker to distinguish between uh, permanent rural settlement and non-permanent rural settlement belonging to city dwellers. So, uh, in a way, one has to be very careful to not uh, uh, fall in a sort of uh, uh, circular argument. Another example where textile tools have been used as indicator of sedent activities is the case of the agropastoral uh, sites. These slides uh, show an example from a period from an excavation dated to the fourth to the second century BC, but the same concept can be applied to uh, survey data. Um, these people used uh, perishable material to build, like wood or uh, wallet and out uh, um, 
was on uh, a stone foundation. So the presence of textile tool is an important indicator to uh, um, to identify uh, all year around uh, um, sites and not just uh, stadion, uh, um, seasonal uh, activities. So in a way, this uh, has helped uh, um, made these people uh, less invisible. As per the distribution of the type of textile tool, also in the Greek case study, loom weights are the most common, followed by spindle wool and by uh, weights. It also has to be um, considered that sometimes uh, some type of weights are similar in textile activity and also in uh, fishing activities. As per uh, uh, the um, chronological attribution, also in the Greek case studies, the uh, shape and uh, decoration of the textual tool is uh, an indicator, and also uh, contextual information can be uh, helpful, uh, even if, as we said, we are talking about uh, open sites. But sometimes, in the end, uh, also the uh, type of fabric uh, is uh, uh, the major uh, uh, chronological indicator. As per the distribution of uh, uh, the presence of textile tour according to primary or uh, rural site, uh, in Greece uh, uh, the textile activity seems to be very much an indicator of uh, uh, domestic activity and linked to um, urban sites, but we also have to consider that the quantity of um, of material is uh, uh, greatly affected by the uh, total amount of uh, finds uh, from the site uh, and also the, uh, the, the, the biography, the development of the, of the settlement. This slide again uh, comparing the, uh, the four uh, different uh, uh, urban contexts uh, and um, the presence of textile tools in the different uh, time, archaic and classical Hellenistic and then uh, Hellenistic Roman and late Roman, shows how the, uh, in a way the distribution of textile tools follows the general um, development of the city. So some final uh, thoughts on the uh, Greek case study. Um, we have to bear in mind that sometimes textile tools have been a key element in the identification of domestic activity uh, in, uh, for the definition of the function of the site itself. Therefore, the uh, subsequent analysis by context might be misleading. As in the Italian case study, looms weight are generally uh, much more visible. And also, uh, it, it would be important to consider the textile uh, tool in relation to the uh, total number of, uh, um, of material found at the site and uh, the diachronical biography of the cities. So compare uh, the Italian and uh, uh, the, Greek, the Greek case studies, we can see that in both regions, uh, loom weights uh, seem to be much more visible. In both cases, uh, the presence of textile tools seem to be affected by the general trend in settlement distribution or the site uh, diachronical biography. Textile tools can be seen both as indicator of domestic and of productive activity, and it's not always easy to distinguish uh, be between the two. Notwithstanding uh, the great limitation, however, uh, the, the survey has the potential to provide uh, complementary data and interpretation to those uh, uh, given by um, excavation, but probably we have to, uh, uh, we have, uh, on the basis of this uh, experiment, uh, we have to uh, elaborate uh, far, uh, more, more uh, tailored uh, methodological uh, tools up to target this particular type of uh, evidence.